Hello there, internet people. I'm Ethan, and today we are going to attempt to break glasses. I'm sure you have seen the, the concept of uh, breaking wine glasses via singing. So you may have even seen a couple of the big YouTubers have a go at it, have a crack at it. They seem to do pretty well. Mike Boyd and Diana Cowan of Physics Girl. And so I thought I could have a go at trying to do something like this. Except for the last time I tried to sing, cats started to line up to drown themselves in rivers. People were Van Goghing themselves left, right and centre. Babies were trying to crawl back into the wombs in which they were birthed from. So I'm thinking we can just 3D print some whistles to have a crack at it. Like what I'm doing right now. So it looks like we found the note, a G4 here. So we're just gonna double check the frequency on the phone. So it looks like we've got a G4 at around 382, 83 hertz. So let me use my whiteboard here and my drawing skills of a three year old on cocaine to go over our plan of action. So we know we've got our wine glass and that's gonna operate at a resonant frequency, which we found to be 383 hertz. And we know a whistle looks like this. Uh, and what I'm thinking is the air is coming inside this whistle like this, spinning around, coming up here, there's a hole in the top, like so. And the size of this cavity here, of the whistle, determines the frequency that it's going to operate at. And what we want to do is get a load of whistles at a load of different sizes. So bigger whistles will have a lower pitch and smaller whistles would have a higher pitch. So we're going to take a few different size whistles and we can graph those frequencies like so. And we should get some sort of curve coming off this. If we have whistle size on the bottom here, whistle, and frequency and we create a nice graph we should get some sort of curve like X like this so then we can use our graph and push in our resonating frequency and determine the size of the whistle we are going for so you think having a physics degree I'd be all over explaining the physics of this but considering my watch time percentages are so low as it is, I don't think I can risk putting you into a seven year coma going through all of that. So I'm just gonna link to Diana Cowan's of Physics Girls video explaining this because that's way better than I could ever do. So I found this uh, model for the whistle on Thingiverse. Uh, I'll link it below. You know, there's one thing 3D printing is known for and that is its incredible speed. Think of a snail race. Except, the snails are up to their knees in mud while fighting against the hurricane and you would still be going too fast. So the word on the street is, and when I say street I mean dodgy dark internet forums, otherwise known as Reddit, is that if you leave the filament out exposed to the air, it's gonna absorb all of this moisture and it won't be able to print good. Well, here in Ireland, it is basically always gray and always raining. Imagine living in a mildly annoyed cloud. Well, I've left this filament here out for almost two years and it is still printing pretty well. Like, very well. Like, you couldn't tell that it had been sitting out for two years in this humid weather. Now, to be fair, the strands are more brittle. It's not quite spaghetti, but you know, it's getting there. But it still prints great, so that doesn't really matter. So we've got a few of them printed here, and we'll give them a quick test, see what frequencies are being thrown out, and if we're anywhere near to breaking this wine glass. But first, and this is your warning, I think we're gonna need some protection. I will get my assistant to help me out. So here we have the armless bearded baby back. And we'll grab some ear protection. Probably some eye protection too is gonna be needed.
Actually, it's better to be safe than sorry, so we might as well just go full body protection. Two thousand three hundred and twenty one. We are way off. Seventeen thirteen hertz. Let's have a go with the big one. One thousand three hundred and forty two hertz. So we're about a thousand hertz off at this point. I think we're going to have to probably go way bigger. But let me graph it first and we'll see what size we're gonna actually need. So I found one of my old uh, science books from college. I think it was like in first year or second year in college. I've actually ripped out all of the experiments. So I did. I clearly didn't do that many because there's still loads left. Does not bring back fond memories now. <laughs> but the important thing is it's got graph paper so we can make a graph. Right, so I finished my graph here as you can see, and it is very, very bad. I haven't done any error bars at all. This would not even pass first year college of physics. I've also extrapolated my, my lines, which is a big no-no. This is not how you do science. This is just for funsies. If we take the, the curve, it's gonna be about 450% bigger. Let me just calculate the size of that for you. We're looking at a whistle that is gonna be about 18 centimeters long. That is a pretty big whistle. Right, so I've got another one done. 892 hertz. Basically within our curves, we're gonna have to go bigger, but we're getting closer. And that is the thing that matters. Now this is a big whistle. Mother of all whistles. Breaker of glasses. Queen of the dogs. Commander of sailors. Lord of the Trains. 599 hertz, still a wee bit off. Unfortunately, it's not big enough. That's what she said. 348 hertz, we've gone too far. We're not just past the end zone, we're into the parking lot here. So we've just run into some printer errors here. One, two failures, and then I run out of filament. Three, four, five, six failures. Buy a Prusa, they said. It'll be reliable, they said. Well, they lied. I got onto Prusa and I don't know how long it's gonna take to fix these issues. Could be a day or it could be an entire lifetime. Who knows? We don't have time to be waiting about for that type of nonsense now. So I tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna try and glue a couple of these fails together cause that one's almost there and see if we can get it to whistle that way. <laughs> right, let's see if our super glued failed versions will work. That's like spot on there. 382 hertz. Right, let's have a crack with the glass. I'm starting to feel a bit dizzy probably has something to do with all of the super glue fumes. This is one weird way to sniff glue. Don't do drugs, kids. I think you're supposed to put some kind of scratch into the glass to make it easier to crack. Okay, hopefully we have a fracture point now. You can definitely hear it ringing. Well, it cracked. <laughs> Maybe in the wrong place. 
stupid baby. Well, I think this was pretty much a giant failure. That's all, folks. Remember, you can do all the things, but in this case, again, it is probably not worth it.